It has a lot of tequila in it, though, so be careful. <laughs> yeah, this might be your best work. <laughs> We're here in the test kitchen and we are making our favorite cocktails. I am going to make a cocktail that's called the Lil Ripper. I invented the Lil Ripper, so don't anyone on the internet try and steal this from me. I'm doing dry January right now, so I can't drink this, which is pretty up. The Lil Ripper is kind of a play on Amaro and Soda. It's kind of a play on an Americano. I call it the literally anytime drink. It's super simple. It takes you like two minutes to make and it's low ABV. So you can drink about 48 of them. It's kind of tastes like if you took flat root beer and flat Coca-Cola and injected it with a little bit more bitterness and some heavy like kind of honey and brown sugar sweetness. Soda. Amaro, lemon, olive, ice. That's it. I'm using Averna. Averna is like, for me, kind of the all-purpose. Averna and Chinar are, are my two all-purpose dark Amari. I'm also very particular about my ice. Just stacking ice cubes like this in a Collins glass is my ultimate pet peeve. I hate it. I think it just looks terrible. When I make this at home, I take ice cubes and I just crack them up a little bit with the back of a spoon. The, the ratio of what you put in here is super simple. Uh, so I'm doing three ounces of soda, two ounces of Averna, and that is beautiful. I love watching the Amaro move down through the soda. I think it's hypnotizing. So then a little bit of lemon peel, and then we're gonna spritz a little bit of juice on top. This along with the club soda kind of brightens the whole thing up. And then I'm gonna do two olives. That adds just like a little bit of salt, a little bit of brininess. You know what? living on the edge. I'm not drinking this, so we're doing three olives. And also it gives you a snack at the bottom. So then colorful side out, you wanna put your fingers like that. Gently crimp it over the top of the glass, rub it on the rim. This just releases the oils in the uh, citrus rind. And that kind of like perfumes the top of your glass. So when you pull your cocktail up, you're, you're smelling like this bright, wonderful, lemony drink. I will always go diagonally with the glass, a little bit peeking above the rim, and that is the Lil Ripper. Pre-dinner, after dinner, pre-lunch, after lunch, rip it whenever you wanna rip it. I wanna drink that so bad. <laughs> I'm gonna make my favorite cocktail an old-fashioned, a rye old-fashioned, that's the key. This is the cocktail I make most nights after work to drown my sorrows in, and it does a good job. I like these raw sugar cubes just because they have a little molasses flavor. It is typically two ounces of whiskey and a couple dashes of bitters, but I like a lot of bitters. I like to soak my cube, like really get in there. I'm gonna muddle the cube. Some people put fruit in here, but I just want bitters. The key to a good old fashioned is you wanna muddle the sugar in the glass you're gonna drink it out of instead of doing it in a mixing glass because you really want like a little bit of sugar residue at the bottom. That's kind of like the signature of the drink. And then pour in as much whiskey as you feel good about. That feels good to me, right? It's after five. Is it after five? Nope. It's almost after five. <laughs> you need a giant ice cube because it makes you feel like you're fancy and you wanna stir it until you feel the glass has become cold. And I like to finish it with a really fat twist. And you really want it to be pretty thick so you get nice spurts. We did it. This is what keeps me warm at night. So I really like this more than a, a regular old fashioned, which is usually bourbon, because the Rittenhouse rye is really spicy. It's spicier than the average rye even. So it can really hold up to that sugar cube. So this still has a really nice kick. It's perfect. It's the best drink. I'm gonna drink this whole thing. Are we done? A year or so ago, I started to make my own old fashions at home. I'm not really a cocktail person. If you know me, you know, I usually go for wine or beer. I came up with this um, special way of doing it with other ingredients. Little that I knew, I showed up here the next day and I told Kat B, one of our dear co-workers, that I made this drink with lemon, ginger, and honey. And she's like, 
that's called penicillin. And I didn't know, so it will help you cure your heart and the flu. So what, so, do, you, what do you call it? Um, Gabby feel better drink. <laughs> so the first thing I do is I get a lemon and do a big, big, as long as I can for my garnish. Then I'm gonna cut this in half, cut this guy in pieces. Then I get a, a nice knob of ginger, wash it, don't peel it. Two ounces of water that I already have measured. A good amount of honey, you'll be the judge. And then I put two ounces of whiskey. So now you can get the strongest person around you to do this job. It smells good. So I believe that for an old fashioned, you need just one ice cube. You don't need more than that. This is already muddled. I'm gonna put the whiskey in. Don't laugh at my shaking skills. <laughs> oh, the honey bear. So I'm gonna put a little bit in the bottom. Then I'm gonna squeeze a little more lemon in there. There comes the big ice cube. I like to use the strainer, but I like to um, pretend that I know what I'm doing. Be careful, don't poke your finger. So this is candy ginger. I just wanted to dress it up. That's it. Gabby feel better drink. Bon appetit. So shikunji is a drink that I grew up having. It's basically just like a salt and pepper limeade. My dad grew up having it during really, really scorching hot Indian summers. It kind of has this electrolyte jolt that you get from Gatorade. It makes a really, really good large batch summer cocktail, which we're gonna make in January. So we're not really um, measurers in the Krishna family. We're more like pourers. Just pour enough tequila in accordance to what kind of party you want to have. Let's let's just let's do something maybe a little maybe a little splash more. Maybe that's that's a lot of tequila. I'm just gonna 2 p.m. on a work day. Okay, pour the party back in. Then you're gonna add the juice of like six limes, two cups of water, quarter cup of sugar. This is sugar, right? some salt and about three quarter teaspoon of black pepper. The pepper is kind of what brings this to life. And then our ice. Woo, that is potent. And you're just looking for it to froth up. It's nice. No joke, my dad drinks this out of beer steins, and you can totally do that if you want, but I'm choosing a more reasonable option. And then you're just gonna garnish it with a little pepper, and uh, just like that, spiked shikunji. That's the good stuff. It's like everything I want a sports drink to be. Maybe I should just be putting pepper in my Gatorade. So look, I wanna try a sip of my shik spiked shikunji. All right, this is, seems so crazy to me. So I'm very excited. It's really good. It's really frothy and pretty though. It has a lot of tequila in it though, so be careful. <laughs> Rio, this might be your best work. <laughs> it's really good. I like all that pepper in there. Yeah, and you know, you don't even have to feel bad about the tequila because the pepper's like cleansing. That's so true. Why wasn't it in our healthy-ish issue? It's a pepper cleanser. I am going to be making a white Negroni. It's one of the easiest cocktails to make of all time because it is, um, there's nothing really to remember. It's just a one to one to one ratio. The first ingredient is gin. Today we're using Tanqueray, which is a London dry gin, which is the purest form of gin you can find. Uh, this is Lille Blanc, it's made from white grapes. And it has these really great like warm honey and citrusy notes to it. It's also very sweet. The last ingredient is Sue's which is extremely potent. It is very medicinal. So we're just gonna use a tiny bit of this and it's going to anchor the drink and give it this like backbone. I have my shaker. Just gonna dump some ice right to the top. I'm gonna do one and a half ounces of gin, an equal part of Lule, and then I'm just gonna do a half ounce of Suze. And then I am going to take a uh, long-handed uh, bar spoon. You want the ice to properly dilute the drink so it's not so strong and like burning. The outside of it will frost up. It'll just feel chilled. I'm going to use a large ice cube to put into my rocks glass. And then I'm just gonna strain this. Finally, uh, traditional Negroni, you finish it off with an orange peel. For this one, I'm going to finish off some lemon. The outside of the citrus peel has all these really aromatic oils that you can kind of hold it a few inches away from the glass and just give it a squeeze, just drop it in, and uh, there you go, white Negroni. Can you make it already? 
I made it all for you. Oh, that's so quick. Never had a white Negroni. Are you a fan of regular Negronis? Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah? I like the little, um, it's like way more floral, I feel like, than a regular Negroni. Like everything's super botanical? Ah, uh, yes. So it feels, you know, it kind of feels like you're drinking a Negroni. Yeah, it's like the Negroni put on a nice pretty dress. Yeah, Negroni is going out tonight. All right, can I go back and pound some meat now? Okay, folks. Today I'm going to make my favorite cocktail in the whole wide world, which is the pina colada. This is about a half of a fresh pineapple that's been cut up into chunks and then frozen. Good to use a high powered blender if you have one because the stuff's very hard. This is six ounces of uh, cream of coconut. Coco Lopez is the brand of choice. Very, very, very sweet. Also in this recipe, we have a couple of ounces of unsweetened coconut milk, a couple tablespoons of fresh lime juice to cut through all of the sweetness, six ounces of white rum, some ice, because it wouldn't be a recipe by me if it didn't have a little salt in it. Once you've blended all of your ingredients, you then throw the pina colada back into the freezer in the blender so that it gets super nice and cold again and can sort of recrystallize. Smart. And Great, it Andy. Really well when you whisper in the I love pina coladas. It's the only kind of frozen mm. drink that I love. I mean, Fromark? No, I don't do that. You just do frozen margarita pie. I just do <laughs> margarita pie. I just want my margarita on the rocks. Oh yeah, same, yeah. but occasionally. Time to place. Here's a little lime juice. Um, so this has been in the freezer for like 30 minutes and now I'm gonna re-blend and then we're gonna serve it up. I'm gonna add some extra rum in here. Are we rolling right now? I don't know like what's going on. The most exciting part of all, we have a hollowed out pineapple and in we go. Some garnishes. These are fancy maraschinos. I guess we're fancy like that at BA. And then this is for whoever wants to join me. I'm gonna do a float of dark rum, which is like a bit more aged and more flavorful than the white rum that's in it. Double down on the booze. Okay, I'm ready. Can you tell I'm so excited? Okay, now we're having a good time. Here, everyone can have a straw. <laughs> Everyone's gonna go in down at the same time. And made us pinos, you're so very welcome. It's I mean, very delicious. good. It's one of the great it's cocktails delightful. in the world. I have a lot of favorite cocktails. My favorite cocktail to drink during the winter time is a classic daiquiri. It's really bright and refreshing and it makes me feel like the sun is shining. It's my favorite sick day cocktail. That's not a thing that most people have, but I do have a sick day cocktail. Any drink that has is not just booze has to be shaken. So like a martini you stir because it's just booze on booze, but because we have lime juice and rum in the same cocktail, we're gonna shake it. So we've got some white rum. I'm gonna take two ounces of that. I love these little uh, mini graduated measuring cups because it's just so much easier than a jigger. I'm not being paid to say this. We're gonna juice some limes. We need one ounce of lime juice. Some people add a little bit less. I like it pretty tart. And then we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, which is just one to one sugar to water. We're gonna add plenty of ice to our shaker. A lot of people serve it in a coupe. I like it in a stemless glass, because I feel like it wants to be drinking kind of quickly. That's a daiquiri. Well, do you consider yourself a big drinker? Uh, is this an intervention? <laughs> like, are all my friends and family gonna come out? Uh, yeah, you know, I enjoy, uh, to en I enjoy alcoholic beverages responsibly and often. One of my absolute favorite cocktails, which is an Americano, you have to be careful when you order it because some bars you could go in and ask for an Americano and they think that you mean the espresso and hot water. Um, <laughs> definitely got served coffee once or twice. It's very similar to like a Campari and soda. It's something you would have like before maybe having a glass of wine or getting into it. It's a really easy cocktail because it's equal amounts of a red bitter like Campari. Today I'm using this Fort Have spirit which is similar to Campari so it's got those bitter kind of botanical um, qualities and it's a little bit sweet and then with that you use equal amounts of red vermouth or sweet vermouth so I'm just gonna eyeball the lines on the glass are really handy so you're getting like a bitter sweet kind of vibe and then it's this great color too and this is the Antica formula one um, but like a Dolan sweet vermouth or any sweet vermouth will work but you could also do it in like a big wine glass um, and normally it would be 
more than one rock, but these are such big rocks, so let's, let's just do that one. And then you top it off. <laughs> classic, that is so, like, classic. Did any get in there a little bit? Let's do that again. Just top it off with a little spritz. A little stirry stir. Got a little orange. Oh, she's pithy. I like a little bit of green olive, which sometimes you'll get in like a Aperol spritz or a Campari spritz. I love that. And that's the drink. Mmm. Mmm. I love mezcal, it's my favorite spirit. I will drink it uh, on its own, just sipped, which is the proper way. But I kind of do like a little, kind of pair with some of my favorite ingredients. So the first thing that I do is kind of make the salt mixture. I just use about like equal parts, I'm just gonna use my fingers, equal parts flaky salt to chilies. And I just kind of make like a chili salt. I'm gonna grab a mortar and pestle. I just uh, broke down the flaky salt and the chilies. You saw it was like on the coarse side. Now it's quite fine. That's actually probably not only gonna help it stick to the glass, but it's also, you're really kind of extracting the oils from the chilies. And then I'm gonna cut the grapefruit. I just like to remove the center membrane. And then from here I kind of go and make a few slices. Now I'm just getting more chili salt on the uh, grapefruit. And you could serve this on the side. I like the glass of ice. And then I'm gonna do a nice pour of mezcal I'd say about almost halfway. What I'll do is I'll take a sip just as is. You don't, oh, it's so delicious. Just drinking it neat, it's sometimes too much for me, but drinking with a little bit of ice and then kind of going and taking a bite of the bitter grapefruit with the chili and salt, it just like you get this rush of flavor and my mouth's starting to salivate. Just try that. I don't actually drink that many cocktails anymore. My children have sort of taken that part of my life away. Back in the day, margarita was my drink of choice, for sure. There's just something about how simple and clean it is. Anything, frankly, that hues to that sour formula, like that is my jam, just like simple but bright. You can use simple syrup, you know, for this recipe but you can also use Cointreau. So Cointreau is a um, kind of a sweet, sour orange based liqueur from France. I'm gonna put ice in here first. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau. I like to do the most expensive alcohol last just because if you screw up one of the other ingredients, you don't have to start over. I like to do a half rim of salt. Sometimes you're just not feeling, you know, that much salt, but at least this gives you the option. Boom. It's damn good. It's a little sharp. Anyway, that's all, folks. Great Thank work. you. Nice. Anybody want a piña? I got lots of piñas. One way.